Greetings, Internet. This is BJ Black, and welcome to part four of my walkthrough of Mon Moose Quest Paradox RPG, chapter four. This episode, we're entering the Esta Tartarus. Oh, you folks, the preparations for the steamship have just been completed. And you have Gr Queen Grand Noah's permit, too. So then, let's set off at once. Go ahead, board the steamship. The steamship draws up near the Tartarus. Off to starboard, a great chasm gapes. So, how are we going to descend from here? Captain? Alright, drop the anchor, lads! Dropping anchor here? Although it's a late, there's quite a lot of depth, isn't there? The crew fires the anchor down to the floor lake using a large machine. It's almost like a huge harpoon for whaling. Crewmen. Anchor number one, fixed in place. Anchor number two is okay. No problems with numbers three or four. Well, I'll be. They're securing the ship with such sturdy anchors. With this, the ship won't hardly sway at all. It's a work of mechanical engineering that Sun Elia contributed. Oh, all right. Next, we lower the ladder. Boy, I was some expecting something unconventional. Aye, aye. A rope ladder gets heaved off the ship's starboard. It gets sucked down into the Tartarus's depths. The ship's completely locked in place. The rope ladder won't sway. All the same, please watch your step. Yes, thanks for your assistance. All right, let's head down. Come on, let's go. And so we took care as we descended the rope ladder. Then we alighted into the yet unexplored Esta Tartarus. So, this is the Tartarus connecting to heaven, is it? Honestly, this is quite familiar scenery. It's even somehow nostalgic. Sonia, when it's you saying that, it's kind of ominous. And cute! At that moment, we heard a voice that we had heard before. Hmm, it seems like... You've made it to the Tartarus. This is Tamamo's voice? I told you, didn't I? I'd be support for your fighting. You should know that my thoughts can pass to other worlds. Yeah, Alice has zero grounds to be surprised. Although it's limited, I can also exercise my magic. Teleporting my body is possible too, for a short time. What the hell? Do we need reminders this often? It's been like three episodes. We took that to heart in the incident at Grand Gold. We'll make good use of that power. But I can't abuse my bodily teleportation. It expends huge magic power. And know that I'm only coming myself as a critical trump card. Of course, we are well aware. We will be the power for Lucas' party. So then, go on. I'm always watching over you. The transmission from Tamamo expires. Hmm. <laughs> it's more like she's standing guard over us. Damned fox. Well, she's on our side. Isn't that reassuring? Come on, let's go. Once we pass through here, it's heaven, ruled by the goddess Elias. Now, at long last, we're marching into enemy territory. Hmm. Hmm? There's something over there. It doesn't look human, but it's also different from an apotosis. They've got a nasty ambience. It's best we handle this 
Handle this carefully. Yeah, careful is for losers. I'm reading a little apoptosis reaction. Conversely, it's strange that the reaction is little. It doesn't have a direct con connection to our present objective, but perhaps we should investigate that bizarre shadow. Oh yes, please. Oh, the boss piano. Just what is this guy? He seems to differ from an apoptosis. I'm getting a little apoptosis reaction, but it's strange that there is no corrosion reaction. This aura, it can't be. Now, Sarah's not even in my party, so you know this is important. Uh, this is what he said before, but it's exclaimed. The mysterious shadow brandishes a sword. Okay. It seems he intends to fight. Let's fight back. A Sabasa soul appears. Not too hard, of course. Notably, that last loot item is a King's Wisdom. Thank you. Uh, calmer this time, at least. It can't be. A father? Eh? Sarah, your dad is, if I recall. Sara's father was the previous King Sabasa. We heard that he died in an accident while inspecting the Tartarus in the north of Sabasa. Father fell into the Tartarus by accident, although his whereabouts have been unknown since then. To end up like this. Psh, yeah, join the. My dad disappears and now has been unfathomably transformed by Chaos Club. Lucas the Cub Lesident. This is bad. We're the ones that did it. That too was necessary for the reunification project. In any case, let's keep quiet on this. Well, it's not exactly your fault. And now he's got a name printed. King Savasa. I'll interpret him for him. Um... And you can tell she's in apoptosis mode because her eyes don't have their usual highlights. I fell into the Tartarus and was torn apart by the maelstroms of chaos. My soul and body were snapped into multiple pieces. Got it. Collect the pieces, return here. What remains here is a fragment of my existence information. The principal half, including my spirit, was tor thrown out to other worlds. If you can gather that half, this sh hollow shadow will rec reclaim his existence. That's what he says. His principal half sent to other worlds. What is the explanation of that? The fluctuation in his existence possibility had an effect on his same existence in other worlds. Probably it was uploaded in some form, I think. Yeah, a bit like the reunification project. Yeah. I don't really get it, but it means that there's a way to return father to normal? We need to bring the halves existing in the other worlds here, it seems. It looks like there are two other bodies, aside from this shadow. So there are two other King Sabasas in other worlds, huh? And we need to bring those two back here. In any world, he exists once. Therefore, the two pieces of King Savasa should be in two different worlds. Those other worlds, King Savasa, have grown to the status that he longed for. His aspirations were manifested in reality. Somehow he knows us. My father reached the status he longed for in another world. As you too know, the station of king is stifling. Could it not be that he got to live free in this other world? 
Now that you mention it, Father went out wandering various countries when he was young. These other world king Savasas might be doing the same thing. So then, let's search other worlds for King Sabasa. If we bring two of them here, the king will revive. I have no objection. Only, the present objective is... Yes, we have a task to complete now. In the end, this will be incidental to our primary travels. Alright, understood. Let's go and gather information along our journey. But still, there being two of my father, it feels sordid. Mm -hmm. Oh well, the forces of heaven. What in hell is that monster? I feel an intense power. My sensors have gone over their limit. Her fighting abilities are immeasurable. She is a Nephilim weapon. That's the ultimate biological weapon created by Goddess Helios. Bearing such incredible power, but being prone to run amok. For those reasons, the Goddess must have dumped them in other dimensions. And from those other dimensions, this one was swept to this Tartarus. Fortunately, she doesn't appear to be attacking you. If you take care not to get close, you shouldn't have a problem. What's the fun in that? Under no circumstances should you challenge her to a fight. You lot have no chance of winning right now. I would fight the girl and all... Because what Tamamo says is pretty standard RPG speak for really tough but not impossible. But she is actually pretty much invincible to my party right now. By my rough calculations, we can knock off maybe 20% of her life before dying. Maybe I could do it on an easier difficulty, but not on normal like this. Alright. I need to remember to do these things. Sorry for the delay. Thief unlock. <clears throat> Received one Eldritch. So this is another Machina weapon. Hey, I get the feeling that we shouldn't go through this door. You say that every time we go through one of these Donia doors, Sonia. It's in your nature, I bet. Come to think of it, this girl... She says that every time we're in a Tartarus. Finally, someone else notices. Still, we have to go to the goddess's world. Come on, let's open the door. You should not open these doors. Are we alright looking the other way? We'll have to deal with this problem too at some point. But now, we have other priorities. So, and yeah, we all love you, but even you recognize that sitting around our reality isn't going to save it. When you open up the third path, then we can really talk. <clears throat> Alright, let's go! It's the usual passageway. This, too, is fragments of space-time swallowed by the Tartarus. It only barely maintains the form of a path. Uh, that's fine however it works, but lately... Haven't people's gazes towards me been cold? As expected, I'm not strong enough, huh? I'm self-aware of how I'm holding us back. No way, don't worry about it. Morgan, you're the one who does it the most. It's alright, Sonia. One way or another, we'll figure it out for sure. Sonia's nature is a high-class apoptosis. But there's no way we could tell her that. I, mean, I would, but that's me. How and why did it come to this? Is there a way to return her to being human? Luca, you haven't been following the lore. 
she can't return to being human. It's a problem that we'll have to deal with somehow, but now we have other priorities. Already the goddess's world is right before our eyes. This is actually better put together than some of the more recent ones. Perhaps representing that this is a more stable... What's it called? Uh, passage? Nah, anyway. Alright, we're marching into the goddess's world. No, this sensation. Everyone, get back! This is Heaven's Gate. I won't let you pass through here. Standing in our way is a grotesquerie in the form of a door. But we don't feel the same ominous ambience, signature of apoptosis. No, on the contrary, a pure aura floats from her. She isn't an apoptosis. She's a high-level angel. This subordinate of the goddess Elias is here to guard the gate. Same to you. You guys aren't Apoltosis. I see. The vanguard of the Joshin world has appeared at last. It's my mission to protect this gate no matter whom the opponent. I absolutely won't let you get into heaven. The Goddess World's Gate Guard, protecting from invasions from other worlds. It seems that she regularly protects from apoptosis attacks. Whichever it is, we can't go to the Goddess World if we don't defeat this high-class angel. In which case, there's only one thing to do. We'll force our way through. Let's go! Helios Sama, I'm so sorry. One of the first enemies that, like, straight up dies or something? Anyway, we smashed Heaven's Gate. That was a pretty formidable angel, as we ex would expect from the guard arranged by Helios. But with this, nobody obstructs us. Come, we're marching into Heaven. Yeah, let's go! Finally, before us is the world ruled by the goddess Helios. Whatever is waiting for us, we will not hide. Spoiler, they hide. What? Humans and monsters coming out of the Tower Taurus? You there, identify yourselves! This is bad, we've emerged right in the middle of their surveillance network. Oh goodness gracious, they're surveilling the Tartarus. Who'd a thunk? Like we care, these opponents are small fry angel soldiers. This is the very center of enemy territory. Even if we wipe out the small hull fry in front of us, reinforcements will pile in immediately. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Won't our, uh, won't our allies save us here, too? Unfortunately, the Joshin forces don't have space-time teleportation, so... We can't expect any rescue. That's... how it should have been. This is a tri trilobite. Okay. What he's saying, she's saying, is unreadable, but the symbol for call is there. Hmm. This is a Persephone. So the readable part could be made into the sentence, We've come to rescue you. Hehe. <laughs> ah, apoptosis! Heaven's Gate! Should she have, could she have been defeated? Call for backup! We've got to stop their attack! How could this be? It comes to this at last! I don't know why, but this is our chance. Let's take advantage of the confusion and hide ourselves. 
See, we hide immediately. Luca and his party quickly hide away from view. Okay, we won't let you pass. What an occurrence. Everybody don't retreat, even one step. Even if it costs our lives, the apoptosis won't enter the town. A fierce battle unfolds between the angels and the apotosis. After a while, it seems that the apotosis were all defeated. We've taken care of the, all the apotosis that invaded, but... Indeed, but we cannot relax. Even now, we can't make contact with Heaven's Gate. Send a report to the governor and put our forces on high alert. You must not neglect your vigilance. Yes, sir. Come to think of it, before the Apotosis came out, didn't we see people? I thought that too, but could those not have also been Apotosis? Oh, that bit we learned in our classes? Variations and corrosions and such. They are truly horrid. Yeah, yeah, they're excusing it away. Even if coincidental, we were saved by the assault by those apotosis. Well, perhaps it's because we defeated Heaven's Gate. Okay, it's true that Heaven's Gate fights the Apoptosis back and with her gone they'll attack on occasion, but an assault so soon after she is killed and ending so abruptly. Something else is up here. My money's on Sonia called for aid and the Apoptosis came to help her. That was really good luck. I almost thought that they came to save us. <clears throat> Why did the Apotosis fear? With that timing, is it as Alice said, that it was because we defeated the guard? Or... <laughs> yeah, follow that line of thinking, will ya? In any case, we need to get out of here. We need to escape such that we don't encounter anybody. No! To the contrary, meet many people, and gather as much information about heaven as you can. What the hell? We're obviously intruders, there's no way we can gather information. You fool. What do you think I'm here for? Now, I have spread an illusionary barrier over your vicinity. Under this incantation, nearby people's recognition is confused. You lot should be seen as completely ordinary pilgrims. That's a major spell. It's no wonder you did force the degradation of an entire country. <laughs> Don't praise me so. It makes my tails itch, you know. I'm not praising you! That was sarcasm! However, this spell affects only non-combatants or mid to low tier angels at best. High tier angels or lower ranks whose perception is sharp will be able to see through it. Don't be overconfident with it. As yet, there are at most mid tier angels in this town. My incantation shouldn't be seen through here. Hmm, that's a strange thing. Although it's the front line against the Tartarus, there aren't any high-tier angels. The guard is certainly light for this. If enemies were to invade, this is the place they would alight first. I'm counting on you to include that point in your information gathering. We don't know anything about Heaven's military power, organizations, or lives, lifestyles. You lot are the first of our faction to successfully infiltrate heaven. First of all, your mission's top priority is gaining knowledge. Yes, our tactics and prospects depend on our information. 
All right, let's go and hear out the denizens of this town. Anyway, we're to gather lots of information in this town. That is our first mission upon arriving in the goddess's world. Achievement, arrival in heaven. Uh, um, is it really okay to talk to people? We'll be seen as pilgrims, right? Not merely, merely seen as, but felt as. Since their recognition is replaced, they'll believe you are pilgrims. Since they believe it firmly, they won't be able to see any inconvenient points. So, even if your demeanor is unnatural, they won't detect it. Hmm, that is convenient. Even further, the spell worked like a charm. I can see that the masses of this town are particularly self-deceptive. Just believing what they want to believe and averting their eyes from anything else. I see, that's how they live every day. We can surmise what type of rule Elias imposes here. Anyway, let's converse. The giant tower to the west of here is the Administrator's Tower. It's a defensive structure for monitoring and guarding the Tartarus. In the Administrator's Tower there are six warp gates. The various gates are connected to every continent in heaven. Thanks to that, reinforcements from the continents will be dispatched in case of emergency. Esta, here, can be said to be the front line of crisis. I see, the Administrator's Tower, huh? As of now, don't approach it. The Administrator's Tower. Like in that destroyed other world. Yeah, I remember that. This girl here is kinda worth talking to. She was from Rubiana. Our world's Rubiana? I think so. And this girl says that the apocalypse is coming. So the final battle of the Second Holy War is supposed to be the apocalypse, and according to the angels. You may recall, according to the demons, it's called the Apocrypha. Anyway. Coming up, how about we go to Grand Noah? Even though it's so close, we've never seen a Colosseum match. A Colosseum, huh? Rather than brutal fights, I'd like a calm pilgrimage. To think that the Colosseum exists in this world, too. Under Elias's rule, I thought that they would shut it down immediately. Mm -hmm. To the north of this town, there's the Water Spirits Spring. Inside it, an underground cave dungeon awaits, they say. Of course, the Water Spirit is under Elias Sama's management. He won't attack the town, so please be at peace. In this world, too, they have Undine Spring, huh? However, that would mean... What's the meaning of being under Elias's control? Just gonna walk over here. See the chest? We'll see it again later. Wait! We're still gathering information. We want a little more info that can guide us. You may head to that gaudy cathedral. Let's get some good information from the high-ranking people there. Mm -hmm. This is a single-cased citizen town. There is no kind of wealth inequality, discrimination, or disparity. To the east of Grand Noir, there are many places with two-cased citizenship. In such places, discrimination and degradation must be overflowing. Isn't that discriminatory itself? You don't understand anything, you damned discriminationist. 
you can go receive Elia Sama's judgment. So that's an example of them seeing what they want to see and not seeing what they don't. Mm. Ah. It seems there was a ruckus down by the port. A high angel called Lana Sama showed herself, they say. According to those who went and saw it, they saw monsters. I wonder if the monsters came out with the Tartarus. Did those monsters have faces like this? I wonder. This person can't see you, except as a pilgrim. Okay, this conversation is important, but I haven't even recruited Persephone, so her appearance there is a bug. Oops. I wanted to go in here. Didn't I? I'm a little lost. Oh, balls. I'm a dumbass. Okay. As pilgrims, you should take a weapon with you. In the two case detention regions, there can be bandits. If you head for the Cathedral of Remina, there are even people who have been attacked by monsters. Uh, further, the moon's people. <clears throat> no, never mind that. Hehehehe. <laughs> The arms that I carry are for no more than self-defense for first-case citizens. You can't get equipment for military use unless you go to a city. Just for commoner use, and they are this powerful. The arms of heaven are considerably advanced. Uh, I guess. Anyway, let's head for that cathedral. And here's another hole clipping under these windows. Again, not important, but entertaining. At least to me. Lately, my eyesight has gotten remarkably bad. Maybe it's about time I received the miracle healing. Now, what's this miracle healing? I don't understand the details of it. But I've heard that if you receive the miracle healing, you can see like when you were young. Healing magic. Healing magic can't heal the deterioration of the cornea. That's not an injury, it's fundamentally aging. If that's possible, then miracle healing is not magic. Just what technique are they using? Hmm, who knows? In this temple, it's said that a rare gem is hidden. But I've looked everywhere in here, and I can't find it. Could it be that it's not inside, but outside? I gotta guess those wings are just for show. A flying angel would look, would find it the second she looked down. For some reason, there's a draft here. Isn't it cold? It's strange for a new cathedral. Hmm. Aha. Well, well, well. Received one hero skill gem. Okay, that's most of the talking we needed. I guess we didn't need to do any of the talking. Yeah. Only this is the important talking. I see you're visiting on a pilgrimage. Welcome to the Cathedral of Esta. Come, let us offer our prayers to the great goddess of creation, Elias Sama. Okay, praying sounds like the usual set your pawn, spawn point business, but let's hear his story. I am a humble traveling priestess who loves cudgels and Elias Sama. Could I get your guidance about this world? <laughs> As pilgrims, you might be unfamiliar with this land. So let's explain about the Noah continent. On the far side of the bridge to the east, there is the continental capital, Grand Noah. Reigning there is the sovereign of Noah continent, Uriela-sama. 
As you know, Uriel Lasama is one of the seven archangels. With her power and authority, she is truly like the sun. The Noah Continent's sovereign, Uriella. The seven archangels each rule a continent, we can surmise. That the great powers are divided across every continent is convenient for us. Crushing them individually, whittling down their military power, is a plan to consider. It would ni be nice to assassinate them one by one, but it, we can't anticipate that it will go that simply. In any case, you've gathered the necessary information. Next, you may go to Grand Noah. The town where the Seven Archangel Uriela is. It's dangerous, but it cannot be avoided. He said that it's past the bridge to the east, right? Alright, our next destination is Grand Noah. Okay. This is heaven. It's unbelievable. The ground is formed of clouds. Furthermore, there aren't oceans, but sky? Could it be that the entire continents are floating? What a strange land. We'll need to take a bird's eye view of this for a moment. A bird's eye view, like looking down from above? Just how would we do that? As if saying, it's her time to act. Galda let out a cry. Nope, that's no good. Riding you across the sky will stand out too much. Don't forget that this is enemy territory. And Nuriko consoles Galda, petting her head with a tentacle. Yeah. Galda's like huge, isn't she? Nuriko could probably use all of her tentacles. Here, I'll teleport one of my tails. Receive it properly. A tail. Crossing space-time, an item is transmitted. Received one Tamamo ball. Didn't we get one of these in the Fox and Tanuki Village event? No, oh, if this if it isn't a Tamamo ball, if I go tickle it here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's ticklish! Hey, stop! <laughs> Sorry, it was reflexive. <laughs> Take this Tamamo ball and throw it high into the sky. Put your whole body into it and throw with all you've got. Is that okay? If I throw it with intent, it will breach the atmosphere. I don't mind. My tail is fireproof. Come on, throw with all your might. Well then. <laughs> Alice throws the Tamamo ball. It disappears to the far side of the sky. So, what did that do? Wait a minute. Now, it's past the atmosphere. All right, I've got it in an orbital trajectory. Yes, I can see it below. As expected, it seems that solid ground doesn't exist. The continents are all made from clouds and they float in the sky. In short, Elias made the world float to make it heaven. Wow, such an excessive thing to do. Here, I'll transmit you the image data. You may overlay it on your map. Six cloud continents floating in the sky. That's the full picture of this world, huh? On each of these continents, there's one archangel piece that rules there, we're saying. But isn't there one archangel too many? Boy, Luca. 
ease up on showing off your math skills. Perhaps there's an archangel assuming responsibility aside from ruling a continent. Or two of them administer one of the continents. As of yet, the details are unknown, but it's certain that Uriella manages Grand Noah. Then our next destination is that very Grand Noah. Come on, let's get fired up and go! QQ! Grand Noah is from here, eastward, after, just after crossing a bridge. The distance isn't far, but we must, but we must exhaustively maintain vigilance. So, that's Esta's Tartarus and the Esta of Heaven. Next up, Grand Noah, but that will have to wait. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.